If you guys want to go check out last video, we actually took Apollo to the track and we had probably one of the best races I've ever had in my entire life. That's a bang bang race, baby! Come on, Apollo! Let's go, baby! Annette, against this guy, his car was called the Godfather, but Apollo reeled him in and gapped him on the big end, but that guy was super cool. And we have uh, two units over there, if you want to call them units. Chuck, you're, you're going to get... You're getting fired. What did I do today? Nothing. You're the number one four tech. Don't show my wheels. I didn't oh. release it to the public yet. Oh, so oh wait. Don't peek back there. Oh, peek, peek, peek. You guys ever heard of signature wheels? <laughs> <laughs> China signature? Mm -hmm. eBay special returns. Well. Chuck got the latest wheels you can buy. We're going to have to race. Apollo versus McAppleby. He thinks he's going to beat me now. So, yeah, we're going to have to battle that out. And my seat's out. And his seat's out. I lost probably 150 pounds. All right, he's cheating. And you have a base, so you're cheating even more. Let's weigh them both. Apollo, if you guys want to see that, Apollo on the scale versus McGapplebee's. Hey, do they have those scales that we could buy? Like, you know the ones I'm talking about? Like $3,000. No shot, really? The one the one that you drive on? On? No, 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 we don't drive it. Like, you literally, we put it on the lift, and then we just, we lift it up and then set it down. Yeah, the little squares. Yeah. They're like three grand. No way. Yeah, they are. Because they're accurate as hell. Steve, do you have a scale at home we could use? It's broken. <laughs> 803. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, why my diet's failed. Alright, we're gonna go to Rite Aid and buy four scales. And just add all the numbers up. Should we try it? It just immediately, we'll, we'll drive up on the scales, disintegrate them. So, Wild Steve's car is back on the channel. He did some mods to it. I think last time it was actually filmed. We were doing the Borla. No, last time was the, uh, the spoiler and the lights. Did we do the spoiler lights? Mm -hmm. My brain's shot. That was like two years ago. My brain is shot. I'm gonna need to see, I'm gonna have to seek medical help. Someone check my brain, because I have no recollection of that. So yeah, we did the Euros. If you wanna go check out that video, <laughs> so I guess we'll have to find that. And the GT350 spoiler that I robbed that old guy for. Yeah, then I robbed you for it. Yeah, Steve, Steve jabbed me. He stabbed me in the back. Took it. And Steve's got Belgian wheels now. And I think he cleans them every night before he goes home. Yeah, I make sure to tuck them in before I go to bed. <laughs> do you wash them every time they come out? Mm -hmm. Now you got one speck of dirt there. You might as well sell them. Oh, uh, the car's totaled now. Look at that. That was the burn from the finger from the dark horse. Absolutely raped my finger. Oh, when you cut the exhaust off? Yeah, a hot piece of metal fell and it literally landed and got stuck to the tip of my finger. Oh my god. Yeah, what are the odds of that? Pretty cool. I'm gonna go buy a lottery ticket now. He has driven it and he said a lot of good things about it because he know his car is upgraded. Um, it's an MT82 car. It's a manual. You guys want, I mean, I wanted an S550 owner that has a upgraded manual car, short throw shifter. What's all the suspension stuff you got underneath? Because that's what like, people don't understand. Like you put a lot of stuff in this car to make it handle really good. Yes. Not as much that you would really think. I mean, the only thing I'm really... It's like tasteful in, mods. Not like yeah. to the extreme where the car is going to ride like crap. Like, it's it's the right mods. Vertical links, other suspension, lowering springs. So round one I did was, yeah, the Eibach Pro Kit lowering springs. Um, along with all of the Steeda stuff in the back. The the bushings, the red inserts that like are on your car Yeah, too. the more aggressive um, ones. The red's more aggressive than... Wait, no. No. Yeah. Wait. No. All right. Sorry. The black no, ones are more good. aggressive. The red ones are not as aggressive. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Because they do come with two. It makes no sense. I always think the yes. red will be more aggressive, and the black's not going to be that bad. Right. So it's essentially the whole stop the hop kit from Steeda. So it's the bushing inserts. It's the um, the metal inserts too. It's like all the insert stuff. The the chassis bracing underneath. It's like that triangular looking thing. I don't really know. I can't remember what it's called, but. Anything that's Steeda that stops the hop is there. This thing yeah. is locked down when you're getting on it full throttle. And then I have the, the white line sway bars with sway bar end links, which the Steeda stuff was good, but it was like $400 more than the white lines. Yeah. So saved a little bit of money there. Um, it's the MT82 uh, MGW short throw shifter with a weighted shift knob. That's it's nice. Ford Performance one in black. Yeah. It's, it's paint matched. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is actually? It looked so, black at first. So, oh, wait, that's antimatter. Yeah. It's hard to tell on camera. Yeah, Camera's well, not going to pick it up the best, it's but... It's in the shade, but anyway, yeah. yeah, I waited seven months for that shift knob. Jesus. Yeah, long story. Anyway. Carved it out of an oak tree in Redwoods Forest? Yeah. So, yeah, that feels really good. It's a 15% reduction. I didn't want to go too crazy with it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's the lowering springs, the suspension stuff, and then under the hood, I'll pop the hood. It has the... Um, so, all around, your car is set up as a good handling car. I mean... Handling car, basic bolt on it, made 445 wheel with a tune. 93 tune at that. 93 tune, it's not on E. Don't tell me what that, we grudge race that car. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full-blown grudge race car. So yeah, it's just the JLT intake. Um, it's the strut tower brace out of a performance pack. 
uh, and I even did the other bar in the back. Yeah, there. the bar you need that one. Yeah, and then just a couple other little cosmetic things. So it's pretty basic, but I'm happy with how. How much money do you think you have in it though? Like all said and done, everything, parts, labor, wheels, tires. Ten, ten grand. Okay, no, but I'm like talking in total, like 50, 60, oh, like. With the car itself? With the car, everything. 50 grand. 50 grand, okay. I mean, that's not too bad. But he didn't, I mean, his is a good option one at the end of the day. It's not like a, um, yours is not like an extreme premium. It's a premium with essentially zero options. Yeah, so exactly. So this is like a good spec to get. But like, obviously, if you wanted to option out, like when we do this comparison, you guys have to understand, like, I'm trying to compare it to something that is somewhat relatable to the sense of the manual aspect and the handling. But I mean, at the end of the day, you could have got an S550 fully optioned out for like 55,000 yeah. as a manual because that's what Apollo was. So let's just say 53,000 at the end of the day without the, the 10 speed option. So you could have got a 10 speed or an, I'm sorry, you could have got a manual car mm -hmm. up there. And then if you would have added all those upgrades, you're looking at right 63,000. Yeah, exactly. That's the kind of principle I wanted to show because if you just do it like that, because the dark horse is fully loaded, yes. dark horse is loaded too. Like it has all the stuff you would technically need, but if you're going to compare it that way, add another 10,000. So you're looking at a $63,000 car, hypothetically fully loaded. And then you're looking at a $66,000 car fully loaded. So that was kind of like the idea I wanted you guys to get at, but obviously he is missing some options. You could do a little different stuff. Yeah, so the only option it has is the stuff that gives you, like, the adaptive cruise control and stuff. It was, like, 700 bucks from factory. Yeah. So, essentially, I sacrificed the 6500 that I would have spent on getting a performance pack car, and I essentially wanted to build the closest thing to a performance pack car, just taking that money that would have been invested with the initial purchase of the car and just put my touches on it, and I'm happy with it. I mean, you really don't need nothing more, nothing less. I mean, the only thing I do like about the performance pack is just the gauges, yeah, that's but you could you could throw that in probably for less than a thousand bucks for real. Yeah. I've seen them on Facebook all the time. But overall, like this is a good spec Mustang and I think you really don't need much more than this. And like, if you really want to dump other money into mods like you did, I mean, that's the best way to go for real. Yeah. I mean, I, the digital dash is nice, but I do like the analogs. I had the analogs in my 2016, and um, it gives you that old school vibe. And I definitely like that. I know you were a huge fan of that. I. I like the digital dash, I do, but since I do plan on keeping this car for the long term, I just feared the whole thing of the screen it, potentially blanking yeah. and then me getting stuck with like a $3,000 bill to get that replaced. Yeah, it would have been. I just didn't want to deal with that. Yeah. Those gauges won't break, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, they should last. I mean, I've seen people, I mean, 100,000 miles on them, 150,000. I mean, you take care of it. I mean, Steve's car, you can see. It's like, if you ever want, someone ever wants to buy this car, I mean, look at it. It is pristine. So, like, this would be a good car to buy later down the road if anyone on the channel would want to buy it. I think it would sell pretty fast. Are you trying to sell my car for me? Maybe. I mean, you never know. <laughs> Everyone wants to buy my car. Someone already said they want to buy the Dark Horse. Someone offered me 50000 for Apollo. I mean, honestly, if someone, I know this would They just bad. see how good we take care of the yeah. car. So, you know what I'm saying? If someone offered me ridiculous money, sure, it'd be, like, hard to pass up on. Because I need a house. Yeah, Steve so needs a house. We all need houses. Well, if you guys want to know something, these are on Amazon. Best thing you can absolutely buy from the Mustang. They literally just slide in and there's a little foam insert. I have bought them for all the cars and I'm taking Steve's for the dark horse. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if they'll fit. I don't either. I think they might. It should be the same, but these are these are literally so clutch. Like, look at that. Now you can actually put stuff in there. So I don't know what everyone's talking about that the dark horse looks like a Camaro. I think the hips look the exact same. To me, at least. Yeah, they're close. I, I think the line dips a little more. They sharpened it? Yeah, but other than that, it's pretty similar. I mean, what even is a Camaro anymore? It doesn't exist. Yeah. Honestly, the way I'm kind of thinking of an S650 is like how the SN95 was in terms of 94 to 9, or I'm sorry, yeah, 9 to 98, you had the SN95. And then 99 to 04, you had the new Edge. It's kind of like this. The S650 is just an upped S550, so an S650 to me is a new Edge S550. Yeah. I see how Ford does it. They do like small changes, and I think all the body stuff was good, but I mean, overall, the driving of it, I think was like, so far, it's it's like phenomenal. Big time. Hopefully we get some- uh, Let's stop and grab a pumpkin. Damn, that one's huge. Jesus. What you want to do is what I did yesterday, do like three loops around the roundabout. you're getting cut off. The guy's like, what the hell's happening? <laughs> Clutch kick it, floor it. <laughs> Just Steve, Wild Steve drifts the absolute crap out of it. All right, you ready? Yep. This is the best part of the roads we have. Wild Steve takes on the dragon. This is our version of the dragon. Oh, yeah. She's grounded, dude. That's good. She's tight. Oh, she's tight. She's tight.
tighter than that stripper. <laughs> oh, this is a good part here. Look at the road. Like, this road is so elite. Then it goes up, doubles down. I always hit a downshift right here, hard. Up and over, and dives right back down. It's such a good road. I had to turn the camera and give you guys the actual <laughs> effect. It felt a lot better than I expected. That honestly, I've never taken that. That in fast. Car yet. I honestly forgot about this strip of road. I know we we rediscovered it with the dark horse. Yeah, I mean, the wind's getting me a little bit. Yeah. But um, the yeah, everything feels tight. It feels put together. It feels smooth. That's why I was a little hesitant on one of those corners. I'm like, I might be entering a little too hot. So I, I braked probably when I shouldn't have. Yeah, you brake kind of where you're like, you want to, you'll unsettle the car where you yeah. brake. But it wasn't like you were taking it too fast. And, and also, it's one of those things where I get freaked out on blind corners sometimes just because I don't know what's going on on the other side of them. Yeah. Um, but overall, yeah. The, that feel really, really Yeah, good. I mean, for the money, dude, this this car handles so much better than I expect. The only notice I think I like, um, what really like kind of like makes me love magnetic ride. I've always been a fan of it forever. Like I've always like I always said magnetic mm -hmm. ride's the best. You can just feel the bumps more, but this does feel a lot more subtle. Yes. Like it doesn't it doesn't keep rebounding. Right. Because like you, if you ever like when you guys watch a normal car like in front of you drive, you'll watch it hit a bump and it'll stay bouncing like this until the suspension settles. The difference between magnetic ride is when the dampers it hits a bump, it slows down the rebound to bring the car back up to the exact ride height that it's set for. That's the difference between like this car and the dark horse well i mean well this car has a lot more suspension upgrades to stop that aggressive like rebound to unsettle the car on corners or hard bumps or tracking wherever you may be but right. it feels better it feels yeah. a lot better than a regular gt and, it, I, honestly i wasn't even looking I, I don't know how fast i was going we were we were getting some good speed through there I feel like it was like 45 50 yeah we yeah. were moving i mean definitely I mean, it, it would have felt like we would have been pushing it in a bone stock GT. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, that would have been definitely pushing. We would have been right at the limit. Well, let alone the fact that the bone stock GTs that have the 18 inch wheel setup only has a 235 wide tire. That's, and yeah. I've got a 305 in the back and a 255 up front, which isn't too crazy up front. So my turn in, if I had a 275, would probably feel a little tighter. But ultimately, I feel like this thing has plenty of grip on the road. If you went with 19s, you probably could have got a way bigger tire up front, too. The Maybe dark horse. The sidewall. Yeah, I is yeah. I don't know how much you can go width wise. Dark Horse has 305s up front and 315 in there. That's why that car shines also handling. There's some corners. This is the good part. Oh yeah. This is the good bit right here. Motorcycle nose. Skirt, stuff. skirt. Oh yeah, he's riding it too. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That one felt good. See, right there, I would have went down to second. Yeah. I was gonna tell you to downshift, but I was like, he's gonna take it. That's okay, too, huh? <laughs> it started to push a little bit, but you you did right. Just yeah. you can let out of it, and it'll go right Just back up. Yeah, itself. let it correct itself. Yeah, oh good. <laughs> <laughs> Perked you up a little bit, didn't it? Like, you weren't yeah. expecting it. I was. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean. Another thing you want to do is like, you want to almost over exaggerate the corner so you can dive into it to give yourself a little more thing. Like, I don't know if you ever see sometimes like, I'll go to the line and come back and then push it into the corner. Right. You don't, I mean, I, yeah, you want to stay in the lines, but I'm saying just like, if you just want to go skirt, like dive it in just a little bit, just so you have the point, the nose, like diving into the corner, like an actual, you're going to like, act like at a racetrack pretty much. You know, I played myself a little bit there. I wasn't looking into the corner. I was looking more dead ahead of me on that. Yeah. So that's one thing. Honestly, the biggest piece of advice if you're looking to become a better driver in terms of turning and handling, rather than looking just ahead of you, follow so far ahead that you're looking into the bend because your eyes go where you look. Oh, yeah. So if you're looking already, rather than looking at this Chrysler in front That's of you. That's how people crash. Yeah, if I'm looking to my far side of my windshield, I'm already telling my mind where to be turning. Yeah, you just gotta look as far ahead as the road as possible. You don't wanna be looking 10, 15 feet in front of you. When I, oh, I'm all saying, gang, brother. There's a woman. That, that's a shorty. <laughs> she looked bad. Turn right now, rip that e-brake. Now, like Steve was saying, you gotta just look like, if you're driving here, you wanna be looking around this corner as far as you can, and naturally, you'll have it in the lowest gear, RPMs will be tacking, and that's something when you get used to the car, you can just do that mentally, and yeah. it's off sound, and you don't have to be watching your gauges or nothing like that, you can just, it's all off feel. All about sound and feel. She got a little, she got a little shitty. She did, yeah. <laughs> oh girl, oh girl, I came out to play today. That's right, I mean, it makes me wonder if, I mean, these tires are three years old, Data is 20s, so the tires are actually older than the car as is. 
yeah. it really makes me wonder if um maybe the tires are just maybe getting a little harder. Yeah, they could have been. They, and plus, it's cooler today. It's not hot, hot. So I don't know. Who knows? But That's all good though. It did feel good. I like when stuff like that happens. It makes me <laughs> laugh. <laughs> it makes you, you know. It makes you learn your car. More. Yeah, you gotta push it because you gotta know where your braking point is. I mean, I rather see someone do that then you overdrive the car to the point where you actually end up crashing because you were like we weren't pushing it pushing it but it was to the point where it broke loose and then you just let off and applied the brakes a little bit and it was fine well you know that's the best way to do it i wasn't on the gas i was on the brakes i kind of just let the car go give it a minor correction to the right and we're good to go wild steve in the action let's go to jail baby holy shit watch out we're in the dark horse with Steve, and uh, we're gonna hit some different little set of back roads because the other ones were kind of hectic. So, figured we'd try this one a little closer to home and uh, give Steve the feel. I mean, he got to drive his car, drive the dark horse. Dark horse still only has 600, well, about to hit 630 miles to it. So, still on braking oil. We're gonna change it close to a thousand miles. But I kind of just wanted to give you guys his perspective of the dark horse and how it is different from an SY50 trying to let everyone at least see the light a little bit because a lot of people are throwing shade at these cars. I don't see the point. I mean, Ford is still at least the ones making them and you got to be grateful for that at least that they came out with something like this. People complain about the screen. They complain about everything. So we'll start off like this. We can show you the inlet air temperature, which is crazy how close it is from the outside temperature. And that's one of the biggest things that I noticed. And I'm always looking at the numbers when it comes to racing and stuff, because that's what you always want to keep an eye on when you're at the track or when you're on the street, just to make sure nothing will overheat. So 82 degrees outside right now, inlet air temperature, 83 degrees, which is one degree off, which I'm surprised. I, uh, I was a little off there. Uh, I was one degree off. Usually it's exactly the same because this car gets so much air, but you gotta think, we still gotta put new filters on it, the KN. We still gotta put the um, take out the carbon traps, so there's a lot more stuff we're gonna free up, and it's gonna breathe even a lot better than it is. Steve's car has a JLT on it. I have a JLT on Apollo. JLT, in my opinion, is the best one to go with for the best money for the intake. Um, I mean, there's some other ones out there. The Steeda makes a good one too. The closed box, they say that's good, but I think it's double the price. So at the end of the day, I'm going JLT. But yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff with this Dark Horse and the SX50 that people are gonna like really, once they unlock the ECU, start turning this thing up, adding, throwing some timing at it. I think this car is gonna shock a lot of people power-wise. And I mean, the 10 speed alone is so much better than the previous generation. Um, I've driven it and it's a lot crisp, it's a lot sharper. And uh, now it's back up. Inlet air temperature, 82 degrees. Outside temperature, 82 degrees. Any car guy that watched their temperatures, they know that's pretty crazy. That is getting a lot of air. I wanna see the data, how much volume of air this thing is moving because you can usually, from tuners, from stuff that I've been reading and like researching and learning, tuners, you can hypothetically tell how much power a car is making by how much air it's moving. Someone told me that and I read it also um, and it's, I don't know what's the best way to explain it. You have to do some calculations, but you can get very close to the number. If any tuners watching this, like drop the, the calculation. I don't know exactly what it is, but I was told. And then we kind of did it with Apollo. We figured it out how much air Apollo was moving um, versus how much power it actually made on the dyno with the new setup. And we were like very damn close. We were close as we could possibly get. Um, so the best way I can put it is I just feel like having that 305 up front you got some serious There's freaking traction, man. And I don't know, I can't speak on how well like Spy, uh, Pilot Sport Cup 2s perform on road, but I have a, heard a lot of people complain that Sport Cup 2s are a really rough on road tire if you're yeah. not tracking it. This feels good. These Pirelli, uh, I think these are what, Trofeo RSs? I think Pirelli Zero. P0s P zeros or something. something RS, but whatever the case may be, I do know that like they put these tires on like a McLaren Senna. Do they really? Yes. And th this feels really good. I mean, I would hate to see the price tag of what it, I would want to try to put them on my car. These are but, expensive. And I mean, yeah. I've seen a lot of people do burnouts and like donuts and stuff in them and they shred the tires fast. Like yeah. they shred very easily. So I'm not doing no donuts in these. I was going to um, until I saw Sheen do it. 
I saw some other performance shop do it with their dark horse, and it completely ruins these tires. Hey, I mean, Shmi, Shmi 150. Shmi 150. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it right. Yeah, he did that video where he literally. I watched it literally this morning. And yeah. Go check it out. He's a cool guy. I like watching his videos. Um, but yeah, he was ripping on it at Hennessy's proving ground, and he just straight ripped like a. It was like a good foot chunk. Yeah. And it straight just peeled off. So I was like, the tires are destroyed at that point and yeah. i was like damn there's no really point of me even doing a donut because i mean it's going to destroy like at least i mean more, i think colin said they're like 700 a tire something like so that. that's 1400 dollars in rear tires that's not including mounted mounts might as well say at least just 1500 yeah 1500 dollars just for a burnout i'm not doing it. that's a little much side note i love when the british guys love american v8s because we dumped tea we dumped british tea in our <laughs> harbor so like the fact that he's like, oh, yeah, give me a Ford GT. Give me a Dark Horse. Like, I love it. Love you, Sheen. <laughs> if you ever watch this, bud. <laughs> yeah. I love sweet tea, though. <laughs> you love sweet tea? I love sweet tea. <laughs> I love sweet tea. Second gear's got a good hit to it, too. Woo. So, this is the first time I've been in since you have the X-Pipe put on. Yeah. And, honestly... The tone is unlike anything I can recall out of a Coyote. I've never heard it from an S550. I've never heard this tone out of an S197. I've heard every single type of exhaust there is under the sun with these cars. But you see, and that's what I love about the Coyote platform is that every single car is different. Every single exhaust setup, you're gonna get a different result out of it. Like, Colin sounds deep for like no reason. His sounds like it chops. I love the way Colin's car yeah, sounds. Yeah, and he's got, um, he's got the valve, I think it's the valve front. exhaust cap bag. Yeah, valve exhaust cap bag. And I think he just, he's got headers. I don't know what headers he has. I can't remember exactly. But like my car, for instance, is just a Borlas type cap bag. I'm on the stock manifolds. So I have cats. So I have the whole nine yards um, yeah, of, of stockness, yeah. essentially. But yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, and Borlas, Borlas, I mean, I, think, I feel like Borlas slept on for a majority. I think everyone did jump on the Corsa train. I did too. Like Corsa's not a bad exhaust, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But if you want that deeper tone and you don't want to spend the extra four thousand mm -hmm. dollars of going with headers and stuff like that i would just go borla the borla's good and see feel the clutch like yeah I felt dude that. like i'm like trying to let it out and that's the thing with this like i'm so used to the fox body being he is that a ferrari coming um i think that's yeah it's a 488 should have got a dark horse body. <laughs> you know after having the dct and then getting used to a manual i'm liking this a lot Dude, this it feels great. Yeah. And you know, so uh, another thing, excuse me, another thing that I'm feeling in terms of this, when I initially saw that they were going to be talking about the price difference from like a GT, I think that like a fully loaded GT today on a 24 is too much in yeah. my opinion. I, I can, buy, I personally wouldn't buy a loaded GT. I can fully justify spending an extra couple thousand dollars for a dark horse over a fully loaded GT with Magna Ride now, and. At first, I was like, you know, for thirty thousand more, is this package compared to my car? Because my car stickered at forty-two. Holy crap! And that's what I'm saying. It just feels. It just goes, dude. And see how you feel that lift? That's what I'm talking about. When it lifts, it slows down the rebound of coming back down, so it doesn't give the shock. Right. To it. I mean, we're rolling. I mean, I'm sweating. Yeah. <laughs> and you both. But yeah, so the best way I can put it, you know, I, the way I viewed it is I got my car sacrificing performance package to put my own performance touches on it. This, if you're looking to not modify a car and just have something straight out of the box that feels good, I, I would buy this car and not touch it. Like, I think that's how good it is. I'm always one to rip something apart and modify it. I'm a modifier too. Yeah. And uh, I love these wheels. I love the wing. I love everything about it. The wheels and pictures are not my favorite. The okay. wheels in person are great. I like a lot because you get to see the nice lip of it. The mm -hmm. color looks good. Everything about it looks good. And I mean, we're just running this full car. I cannot wait for Tail the Dragon. Tail the Dragon, this poor thing, it's gonna have, it's gonna get a beat. She's we're doing a whole change this week though. Whole change is getting done. She's got 640 miles and she hasn't seen anything yet. Yeah, nothing yet. Poor thing. Poor thing. But no, it's it's all in good fun though. We're we're I always you guys know I take care of everything exceptionally well. Oil changes, like I mean, comes down to it. I'm always checking these things to the max just to make sure that everything always stays good. Well, boys, there you have it. Dark horse. 
not Dark Horse Verse, a, uh, I want to say not Max Ever. I don't even know really the best way to word it. Just basic bolt on. Just a basic, it, it's good handling. Up a little bit. Yeah. Taking it to too much of an extreme. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. S550 or Dark Horse. I mean, you got an S550 owner here. I'm still an S550 owner and Steve loves it. So I mean, yeah. don't hate on it. Wait till we see what this thing does at the track. Worse, I'm going to smack Derek around the track. I got to beat him. You're going to have fun. I got to beat him. Derek, if you're watching this, I'm not losing to you. It boils down to how you hit your corners, man. Oh, I'm hitting them. I'll All hit right. them. I'll hit them. All right. I might pucker up a little bit. Might spin the car out, but hey, we're going to send it. Make sure you guys drop a like on this video. Hit that subscribe button. Road to 100K, boys. Much love. You guys know it's all in good fun. But till the next one, hopefully I get to see you guys at the East Coast Mustang Tour. Deuces.